So most of my videos, or all of my videos, uh, when we do rope rescue, I have um, all these fancy schmancy devices that are expensive, Aztecs, Maestros, clutches, MPDs, IDs, uh, rescue senders, captos, all this cool gadgetry, right? And people are, uh, some people are kind of, kind of resistant to that kind of technological advancement. And so they say, oh, we can just do everything the same way we always do it with brake racks or whatever. And I, I have to acquiesce, like that's, that's a valid point. Yeah, you can do all this rope rescue stuff. Actually, let's back it up. Let's, let's dial the clock back even further. And let's show a video where you do your entire rope rescue operation with just carabiners and prussics and the rope. So we're just doing this whole thing with carabiners and prussics. We're gonna lower uh, out using just carabiners and prussics. We're gonna pass it on on a lower and then we're gonna change over to a haul, haul up on a system with carabiners and prussics and then pass a knot with just carabiners and prussics. Just to show you that, yeah, it can be done, but I mean, like, um, so let's see what we have uh, going down. Let's start with our anchor for our belay. Let's zoom in on here. So just prussics and carabiners. So I want a single point load distributing anchor in this prussic, a single prussic wouldn't fit around this uh, enough. So I had to just girth hitch it uh, together. And now I have a nice single point load distributing anchor. This is my belay. So we can do this with our standard tandem prussic belay on the yellow. Um, this isn't really gonna change for the whole op. So that's our belay line. Let's go over to our main working line over here. Same anchor system, um, load distributing single point. And <clears throat> we've ex I've extended uh, where the device that I'm gonna use to lower in this case, um, let's say that this is a two kilonewton or 450 pound load and the standard Italian or Munter hitch isn't gonna fit the bill. So this is my super Munter. Um, for those heavier loads. So this is my device, my lowering device or my descent control device. It's not auto locking. So I need a way to lock this off or go hands free if I need to. And so that's why I extended this out away from my anchor to put a rope grab on the back end of it. Uh, this rope grab prussic is gonna hold the tension that's left uh, after it's bit, after this high tension side here has been, uh, all the friction has been absorbed uh, through the super uh, bunter. And it should be easier for me to release um, and change up. Otherwise, if I put the prussic over here uh, and locked it off, it's really difficult to release it. I would have to have some help, maybe maybe pull on this hand over hand or vector this to try to bump that prussic to disengage it. Uh, I don't have a VT. We're using standard prussic, so a VT uh, may work up front, but I don't have that. So we're going to put our prussic on the back end so it's easier for me to release. Uh, and stop and go. This gives me some auto locking capability. And this is just a directional just to be able to feed this. So when I lower, um, again, I have a two kilonewton, 450 pound rescue load on this. I just provide some tension on my, my right hand here, bump my prussic out, and then I'm gonna let the super munter do its job. Lower it out a little bit, and there we go. Now you can see the super munter working. It's providing me enough friction. I'm tending. Uh, what's going to be the auto lock prussic here. Um, I can tend it with one or both hands. It doesn't really matter. And as you look, as we keep going down, as we keep going down, there's a knot that's going to come up on me. I'm going to keep going until this knot is coming right up against my change of direction here. I'm going to lock that off. Now I need to pass this knot. Okay, so a knot pass on a lower when you only have uh, carabiners and prussics. We're going to build a radium load release hitch. So I'm going to take the knot or the directional out. Um, it's being held by my brake hand here. And I'm going to build a radium load release hitch with the rope on the opposite end. And let's see what this looks like. Okay. Um, I have other videos about non working 3 to 1 back ties, and a radium load release hitch is just almost like that just about it's very close so let's start off I need a, a carabiner uh, a larger gate like a pear-shaped carabiner is, is kind of best for uh, non working three to one back ties or radium load release hitches we're gonna do it line transfer the tension off of here onto my radium load release hitch and so I need some sort of rope grab onto my tension line so step one just 
give yourself a prusik. Here's my rope grab. I'm gonna put this right up against my descent control device, the super muncher in this case. And now I build my radium wood release hitch onto this carabiner. For the terminal end, so just like a non-working 3-1 back tie, let's hand it over here so you can see. But then, just like a non-working 3-1 back tie, I make my circle. We would agree that that's a non-working 3-1 back tie, but the radium load release hitch is just a slight spin off of this. And instead of having the change of direction on our non-working 3-1, we're gonna we're gonna lower out under friction. So the carabiners provide a lot of friction, so I only need maybe something additional here. So maybe your standard munter hitch at, on, on this strand. And that's gonna actually make our uh, radium load release hitch. So standard munter hitch is like, just like you do a clove hitch, but I'm folding it over. Put that back in. And then reconfigure it, make sure that this is configured for a lower. Um, so it, it is right here. This is gonna pull out and it's not gonna flip on itself, but I want this to be under tension. So I'm gonna pull all the rest through, just like that. And then right there, this is where I'm just gonna dog off with two half hitches. Or I could uh, mule it off, um, but really just lock it off in whatever way is appropriate. So either the mule or two half hitches is appropriate in this case. So let's get that dressed. There we go. Okay. And I also want to make sure that I revisit my Prosec and really kind of get this thing extended out. Okay. So again, still most of my, or all my load is still on my, my main device. Um, I'm gonna apply a little bit of back tension here to release that Prosec and I'm gonna let this run and let that transfer happen. And so as we lower out on our super munter, I let it go. You can see that it's completely slack now all the weight is on our radium load release hitch. We're gonna let this radium load release hitch sit for a second, and I'm gonna address this knot. So I need to get this knot all the way through all this. So let's just take this all apart and then push this knot all the way up and through by de-rigging our super muncher. So here's our knot. We want enough to be able to tie our super muncher back again. Um, so we can pull all this up as much as we need. And let's get our anchor back. Okay, so let's zoom in so we can show, so we can kind of demonstrate the super monitor or how, how I like to do it. I go one loop and in the same direction, go back further. So one loop and in the same direction, I go a second loop and then I'm gonna get all that twist out and do a third, a third loop. So that's three loops that I have. And I'm gonna start by, from left to right. So the first right pops over. That's a standard uh, Italian or Munter. The third loop continues to pop over onto the other side. And if I hold that and grab it, that's your classic Super Munter. I'll just clip that right back in. Okay. And I wanna configure this for down, but I want this not to be as close up to my, uh, in this case, descent control device as possible. So I want this knot to feed up. It's already rigged for down. I can see that right here. Um, but I wanna feed this and dress it so that this knot is right up against everything else here. And so I'm just gonna delicately feed this through and make sure it stays dressed. So you see that classic trident shape on the super monitor. The knot is butt up against here. And now let's see how much slack I have to deal with. So there's this much slack in my system that I have to address. Um, so um, we could do a, a tie off on this super monitor, but we already have our Prusik back here. So I'm gonna take this brake strand that would be on the super monitor, bring it back and take a carabiner. And it doesn't really matter where I go on this. Um, I'm gonna go right in the middle right here because I'm gonna take this out and in the end, it's gonna look uh, nice. Okay, so I have everything rigged again. I have my brake press on my super munter back where it was. Uh, the knot is forward. 
there is, there exists, sorry, there exists a little bit of slack, a dead leg, between my radium load release hitch and my primary descent control device. So now I revisit my radium load release hitch and get ready for a lower by popping this out and getting ready to control that lower via a munter. And you can see, um, depending on the weight, sometimes I may need to assist a little bit. Um, and as this goes, you can see that our dead leg is starting to become less dead. I'm actually going to have to feed this out a little bit. I'm going to keep going and you can start to see uh, my super munter start to take the load. And as I keep going on my radium load release hitch, now it's completely slack. I can get rid of it altogether. I'm going to clean this up. I no longer need it. So that goes away. I'm just going to leave this knot in it because it's the terminal end of a rope. So I'm going to throw that out. And now we're back on our system. And so now that we're back on our system, we can reapply our tension, release our capture, and then continue to lower out. Okay, uh, we passed enough of our knot where I'm comfortable maybe putting in a little haul system. So we're gonna change over to a raise. So first thing, uh, first to transfer over to a, a haul system, I need a capture or a ratchet prusik, which I've set here on the tension line. And right now the we're still under some tension on our super monitor here. So I'm gonna start to transfer over uh, and detension this completely. As I do that, the prusik uh, engages and we're full on this prusik now. And we can completely, I'm gonna DC all this completely. All this is gonna go away as we convert over. So you can see it a little more cleanly. Get rid of all these beaners. And I don't have any pulleys, so uh, this is all theoretical mechanical advantage. And so, you know, if it's a full, like two kilonewton load and you only have carabiners, you better get a big haul team. We need to first establish a directional. So I know this, you shouldn't open up a, a carabiner under load normally, but um, just as long as you realize that, make a judgment call. Let's just assume that we don't have much gear and really this is all we have. We're gonna have to do something like that. Um, so I have my directional and I'll just build my mechanical advantage system. We need a haul cam. And as we come up, we're gonna build this. I'm gonna build this uh, above the knot. Let's just assume that this knot is like a hundred feet down the slope and it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. But I'm gonna build my haul system maybe like right here. So I establish my rope grab, in this case, a soft rope grab friction hitch via Prusik. Okay, standard three wrap Prusik. Okay, this would be a normal three to one right there, but it, we're using carabiners. These carabiners are like, 50% efficient, whereas a pulley, a high efficiency pulley can be like 90% efficient. And let's see if we can go back. Eh, I could probably, the more strands I have in here that are moving, the more friction. So if I can kind of separate these out, the better. So that's a three to one with a change of direction. I would never want to do a, a three to one with a change of direction uh, and have a carabiner as that final change of direction because again, 50%, if you team up that out, you're taking a 50% hit right out the gate because um, because your uh, your friction it, it all compounds. And so I'm just gonna separate that out again. So that's my five to one. Okay, five to one with a change of direction. And now we get in theory seven to one. Okay, we're gonna haul on this instead. Okay, now let's haul. And you can see it's like when you use carabiners, there's a lot of friction in this that you're overcoming. And now, like there are these dead legs that are starting to form. We had to take away our seven to one because of the inherent friction of all the carabiners. It was actually overcoming uh, the 70 pound weight. So we stripped it back down into a, a three to one. Our knots here, our haul cams up there. I'm gonna continue hauling and I have to be very careful since I don't have a prusik mining pulley. Zoom in right here. So there's no prusik mining pulley here as I haul. And if I'm not careful, that prusik right there can get sucked up and on the other side. And then we really kind of screwed the pooch if we let that happen. So we need another person here to just to keep, to 
to tend this prusik so it doesn't get sucked through this uh, carabiner. And as I haul my three to one, I'm gonna keep hauling and right, you know, focus on the knot that's approaching right there. So I'm gonna set my prusik and lock off by extending it, letting it grab. I can let go of, the, of my haul strand now. And we're gonna do something called the slam it jam uh, technique. And this is just the long tail. Um, what we're gonna do is create this carabiner and this ratchet uh, capture prusik, but we're gonna put it right here. And I've already done that. So I'm gonna slide this down, and this is where I wanna engage. And this is gonna clip right into my anchor. And so as I start to haul on this, I wanna haul enough so that not only can this clip to the anchor, but also this knot, I wanna be able to get this far enough back so that there's enough distance on the backside so that the knot can get around the carabiner too. When I start hauling on this, my three to one becomes a two to one. And so if this was an actual device, the knot and everything would block and this blocks everything and it creates a fixed line here and then I haul on a two to one. And so I'm gonna try and replicate that here. So I'm hauling on a two to one. Now look at the red line down here. You see how it went slack? So right there it's taut. Right here, that's a dead leg. The second that dead leg forms, that's, a, that's now a two to one as opposed to a three to one. So I'm gonna continue hauling up on my two to one right there. So it, it blocked here. I'm on a two to one, I keep hauling. I wanna haul enough that I can actually get that knot completely through. And here with that secondary capture that I had, I'm gonna clip in. And now I need another hand to extend this all the way out to get rid of this dead leg. So let's get all this out and get this super taut. And now I can let go of my two to one haul. And now I've transferred over onto my new system. And the knot's been passed and I can gear rig all of this. So let's see what this looks like when we clean it up. No, oh, that's it. Look, yeah. Yeah, you're locking it. That's fine. So there's my knot. Let's see how far I got with it. So I needed not only to be able to clip this in, but also to get the knot nowhere in here so that it would bump up against my carabiner. And so now if you look, that's my tail. Let's collapse this in. We've passed the knot and I'm back on a three to one haul system. And my knot's on the backside. Uh, so it's called the slam and jam it technique. And you gotta mine this prusik when you, when you do that. We don't have any pressing mining pulleys. So yeah, you can do rope rescue with just carabiners and prusiks, but it's really hard, it's really difficult. <laughs> you need more people. So uh, it's worth maybe the investment if you're a technical team just to get some good, decent gear.